Although France fell quickly to the Germans during the Second World War, after the invasion of Belgium in 1940, there were a number of French troops that did have some success against the Germans. One such group was the crew of a colossal Char B1 tank that managed to wipe out an entire German panzer company whilst under immense pressure and enemy fire. In France, the problems began for them in September 1939 when they declared war on Germany following the invasion of Poland. However, initially a small amount of fighting would take place during the time known as the Phony War. Some battles did take place along the Maginot Line when the French Char B tanks would prove themselves to be rather brilliant against the German vehicles. They had incredibly thick armour and at this time in the conflict, the early German tanks did struggle to penetrate this armour. The issue with the Char B though is the speed in which they could travel and German tanks could easily outflank them. The deployment of Char B's was limited really until the German invasion of Belgium in 1940 and they were regularly held in reserve until they were needed due to their extremely expensive cost and also the fact they consumed a huge amount of fuel. They were rather devastating when used though as the armaments on board was rather powerful at this time in the early conflict. The Panzers would have to work together to knock out a Char B or the Panzer IV would be needed with its powerful gun. Even Stucker dive bombers would be called to dispatch a Char B and artillery crews would be used to try and knock them out. In May 1940 German forces would invade through the Ardennes forest and via other routes into France, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. The Allied forces at the time expected the first group to come through Belgium and they quickly realised that they needed to prevent multiple attacks coming from different fronts and angles. This meant that the French forces were forced to split up and infantry and faster tanks and military vehicles were the first ones who would try to prevent German advances and slow them down. The Charby would be used in reserve or to stop gaps appearing in the French line. In the middle of May 1940, the French village of Ston would become a place where major fighting would take place between the French and German forces. Today the population here is very small and only 41 people live in Ston. The area would change hands about 17 times through the course of four days of fighting between the 15th of May and 17th of May 1940. It was a key strategic location on the road to Sedan. Operations near this area involved around 90,000 German soldiers and 300 German tanks who were opposed by 43,500 French soldiers with 130 tanks. Although heavily outnumbered, the French forces did rather well. The Germans lost around 26,000 men and 24 tanks and the French would lose 7,500 men and 33 tanks. As mentioned, the town would swap sides a number of times a day and the fighting would devastate the area. In the morning of the 16th of May 1940, German tanks set an ambush along a road through the town and were hiding behind the buildings which were crumbling and derelict caused by the vicious fighting. They planned to take out any French tank, vehicle or soldier who pushed forward. Within this German defensive makeup was an entire company of 11 Panzer III's and 2 Panzer IV's. Each tank was primed and ready to engage the first tank that they set their eyes on and they were all ready to attack. Before dawn, the moment the Panzers were waiting for would happen. A sound was heard and through the buildings was one lone single French tank that rounded the corner. The vehicle in question however would be a special one and its commander was one of France's best tank commanders. The tank that was approaching was a Char B1 Bis, nicknamed Yeur. It was commanded by Pierre Billot, whose heroics would go down in history as a remarkable achievement despite being heavily outnumbered. So approaching was Bilot's Char B1 Bis, an upgraded version with superior armour. It was itching for a fight and was primed and ready for attack. Immediately, the French tank fired its gun, hitting one of the German tanks with a 75mm shell and a second German tank with a 47mm shell. Both of the vehicles were completely destroyed straight out. One of these was the furthest forward tank and the other was near the rear. The Germans were now dealing with an angry French tank general who was fighting them in a huge castle on tracks. The German rounds began to fly towards Billot Char B and the 11 tanks that remained fired upon the French tank. The Panzer IVs were too far away for their larger rounds to have any impact upon the Char B and it was clear that the Panzer IVs were extremely underpowered and undergunned against the French vehicle. It simply couldn't penetrate the French tank with its armament. Around 140 rounds smashed into the Char B, 
hitting its armour and making dents and chipping away at its outer shell, but not one of these rounds penetrated the up-armoured vehicle and subsequently the crew weren't injured. Whilst the Germans were firing, the Sharpe was having mighty success. The French crew were quickly reloading their guns and kept firing at the panzers and were picking off each German tank one by one. Eventually the Sharpe would knock out every single one of those 13 German tanks that were waiting for them. Billot managed to take out every single one of the 11 Panzer III's and both of the Panzer IVs, and his tank also managed to take out enemy guns, and other French Sharpies would swoop in and secure the French town. Ston was back in the hands of the French, and the Germans for the next day tried, but simply couldn't destroy the Shahs that were protecting the town. Although the Sharpies cost a ridiculous amount of money when compared with other tanks of the early Second World War, they were incredibly stubborn and effective in defensive situations. They were rather slow and the fuel consumption was poor, but the armament and armour on board proved the vehicle to be a staunch, defensive tank. Pierre Villot, who commanded the Shah in question, would later spend his war in prison by the Germans, but when he escaped, would find himself serving as a Chief of Staff to Charles de Gaulle. He would later, following his retirement, serve as a Minister of National Defence, and who better for this job? A man who commanded a tank that successfully defended a town against a whole company of panzers. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.